Malcolm Walker, welcome to the University of Huddersfield. Thank you very much. Uh, you're here to receive an honorary award today. Yes. Uh, and in a way, um, this goes full circle, doesn't it? Uh, because uh, you're a Huddersfield lad um, and you started out here uh, and you're back here today. How, how does it feel to be coming well, It's amazing. Honor? I was uh, brought up in Grangemoor, that's 10 miles down the road. I went to school in Murfield um, and I managed to get an O level in woodwork. Um, <laughs> And then whilst I was still at school, I used to organise dances uh, in a Booker Church Hall, Booker Pop Group. That was in Huddersfield. And then later I got my first job, which was working at Woolworths in Huddersfield. So, uh, being an academic failure, it's really nice now to be here and think that I can call myself Dr. Walker. <laughs> Well, you say uh, failure, um, yeah. Iceland uh, has had uh, tremendous success uh, yes. with you at its helm. What, what, what do you put your secret down to? What do you put its secret down to? How, how has it done so well in what is a very competitive market? I think uh, business is actually a lot easier than people think because it all boils down to one thing, common sense. And... Um, just a short while ago, I was having a tour around uh, the business centre here, the business school, and I was asking, how do you teach business? And of course, there's the practical side, doing case studies, maybe looking at IT, looking at numbers. But I said, well, that's half of it, isn't it? Because the other half is imagination. And how do you teach that? And maybe that's where the entrepreneurial spirit comes in. Um, because, you know, um, to me business isn't complicated. I can't read a set of accounts, and I really can't. I've, I've run the business for 40 odd years, and when I tell people that, they don't quite believe me. But I've got a man who can, uh, and my job is to have the ideas. And, and are, are you an idea as well? Is that, is, well yeah. have, you, have you always found that that's one of your forties? Yeah, but you know, uh, you have a hundred ideas and 95 fail. That's okay as long as five work and I think then it comes down to persistence because if you have too many ideas that don't work then you can get a bit brassed off with it you know. My philosophy is you know if at first you don't succeed you try 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 again and actually so many people if at first you don't succeed give up and that's not what it's about. No it's about, it's about carrying on. It uh, is yeah. And, uh, yeah. Just tell us um, uh, a little bit about uh, Iceland's success because it, it has it's done so well in what is a very competitive well, market. Um, how, how, do you, how do you keep your head above water and, and not just uh, above water, above competition? Anybody uh, running a business or a retail food business will tell you that their success is down to the quality of the products and the prices and the marketing and of course it is. But then they'll say, uh, and of course it's down to the staff, but they don't really believe it, they just say that because they're expected to. But in my case, I really believe that because I've got this theory that happy staff make happy customers. Happy customers put cash in the till. So how do we make our staff happy? Well, uh, the Sunday Times run an annual award where they'll send out anonymous questionnaires to the staff and um, the, uh, they then choose the best company in Britain to work for. In the last three years, twice we've been voted number one, and once we've been voted number two. The best company in Britain to work for. And one of the questions to the staff is, are you happy with your rate of pay? And we pay £7.12 an hour outside the M25, and we were number one in our staff being happy with the rate of pay. Number two was Goldman Sachs. Now, this goes to prove that happiness in your job isn't just about your pay packet. Of course that's important. And at £7.12 an hour, believe it or not, we pay more than Sainsbury, Marks & Spencer, John Lewis, Waitrose. Nobody would believe that. Iceland pay more. We're second only to Tesco, because they pay more than we do. But my ambition is to, is to get ahead of them. Even so, £7.12 pence an hour isn't a lot but I think we've got the happiest staff in Britain and that staff motivation is what helps drive the business and how do we do that well it's a whole cocktail of things but we're very good at throwing parties and spending stupid amounts of money on the staff 
And you know, uh, four years ago, we took 1,000 of our managers and senior people for a week in Disney World in Florida. It cost us four and a half million pounds. We chartered three jumbo jets. Now, as a public company, you would never dare do that. What a waste of money. Well, it's not a waste of money. Every penny was an investment. And some people will say, well, why didn't you just put that money into the pay packet? Well, if we did, it's soon forgotten. But they remember that trip for a lifetime. And every year we do something like... I mean, the first night in Disney World, the bar bill was £40,000. <laughs> and, of course, the Americans don't drink. They were horrified. <laughs> and, and talking off charity... Yes. Um, which it is, in a way. The, uh, Iceland uh, have the Charitable Foundation. Yeah. It's Charitable Foundation. Yeah. Um, just tell us a little bit, how did that come about and what's its purpose? Because there's not too many companies that seem no. to drive um, uh, thrust towards charity as much as Iceland seems It to. started years ago, we were approached um, by somebody who was starting something called the Percent Club. And uh, to join, you got to guarantee to give half a percent of your profits every year to charity. Uh, so we joined because we thought it was a good thing to do, but this has grown every year. And now um, it's back to staff motivation, because every week uh, in August, uh, every August we have a week, we call it the charity week, and every one of our stores is free to do whatever they want to raise money for charity. So they do stupid things, they wash cars, they climb mountains, they go cycling, they do all these uh, uh, adventures. Uh, and every year we'll lay, raise over a million pounds through our, our staff efforts. And we do that for two reasons. One, because it's uh, a good and honourable thing to do. But secondly, it's about staff motivation because the staff love it. So it's quite selfish in a way, really. Uh, one, we give money to charity, that makes us feel good. But two, it's staff motivation. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.